The Defense of Marriage Act, which is known as DOMA, was passed in 1996 by an overwhelming majority, actually, of both the House and the Senate. It was signed into law by President Clinton. And it was passed largely in response to a late 1993 Hawaii Supreme Court decision, which threatened um, to legalize same-sex marriage in Hawaii. Uh, same-sex marriage was actually never legalized in Hawaii. To this day, same-sex couples can't marry in Hawaii. But the Hawaii Supreme Court had said that the state better offer a very good reason for restricting marriage to a man and a woman if it is going to continue to restrict marriage to a man and a woman. A variety of political and legal things happened in Hawaii after that decision, such that Hawaii never got same-sex marriage. But after that decision was rendered, people began to be concerned that, in fact, a number of states might start adopting same-sex marriage. So Congress passed DOMA, and DOMA has two primary provisions, Section 2 and Section 3. Section 2 tells individual states that they need not honor a marriage determination from another state. So if a Massachusetts same-sex couple gets married, then the state of Iowa need not necessarily respect that Massachusetts marriage. Section 2 was probably redundant because throughout the history of this country, states have always had the ability to not respect a marriage performed in another state. So for years, there was a fair amount of inconsistency with regard to which states honored common law marriages. And sometimes a state would honor a common law marriage that was entered into in, to another state and valid in another state, and sometimes they wouldn't. The real impact of DOMA, though, is probably um, from Section 3 of the law. And what Section 3 does is define marriage for federal purposes. And this affects uh, a huge number of people. It affects, for instance, all federal employees, whether one is a congressman or a baggage screener at the airport or a scientist for OSHA. If you're a uh, gay or lesbian person and you are married and you're a federal employee, your spouse is not entitled to any kind of spousal benefit. Your spouse is not entitled to be a part of your health insurance policy. Any sort of provision that normally follows marital status for federal employees does not follow marital status if the couple is a same-sex couple. Just as important, just as numerous, um, Section 3 of DOMA means that no same-sex couple um, can utilize the spousal provisions of the Social Security Act. So for most married people, if a spouse dies, um, the other spouse gets a death benefit. For most married people, uh, if a spouse retires, one can protect, one can protect, one can collect on that um, spouse's social security record. Not so for same-sex couples. Comparably, tax law, as most people know, the tax laws make a pretty big distinction between marital status and non-marital status. A same-sex couple in New York who is married has to file two complete set of tax returns on April 15th because they're married for purposes of New York law, but not married for purposes of their federal income tax. That is actually the kind of provision that is at stake in the Windsor case, which is the case that's going before the Supreme Court. Edith Windsor and her partner were married in Canada, actually, and then they settled in New York. At the time they settled and at the time Ms. Windsor's spouse died, New York actually had not decided to grant same-sex licenses itself, but it was honoring same-sex marriages that were legally entered into somewhere else, just as I mentioned states have always done. So New York was recognizing Ms. Windsor's marriage, but the federal government was not. Ms. Windsor's spouse died. There was a fair amount of inheritance involved. And Ms. Windsor was taxed as if she was not married. She was taxed much more than she would have been taxed if she had been a spouse, because if she had been a spouse, she, they would have been treated as a marital unit, and the inheritance tax ramifications would have been significantly less. So Ms. Windsor sued, arguing that it was unfair for the federal government to treat her so differently because her marriage was not respected as uh, opposite marriage would be.